And then I'm going to introduce our next speaker, who uh, is actually uh, was at the first OpenMR, if I remember correctly, the one we had uh, two years ago, the one where we could meet in person and everything. So then our next speaker is uh, Veronica uh, Tepina. Uh, she is an associate professor at the uh, IT University of Copenhagen, uh, and her work focuses on limited label scenarios in machine learning, uh, but uh, to many of us, she's also known for her uh, blog that many, that if you do not follow, you should actually totally go and follow, and also um, her activity on Twitter, which is actually the next, the topic that we, uh, that she's going to cover in this talk, because um, I think uh, a lot of uh, scientists nowadays do use Twitter uh, or would like to use Twitter, but I'm not sure exactly how. So she's here to tell us uh, about that. Veronica, the floor is yours. All right, thanks so much for, for the invitation. I'm just gonna move some things around on my screen so I can see everything. Uh, yeah, it's great to, to be back. Uh, as Remy said, indeed, um, uh, I talked about uh, failing the first time, and uh, today the topic will be uh, a number of tips uh, that helped um, me with getting started as a scientist. So this is about a paper by the same name that we wrote together with Filina uh, uh, Hermans, Kasper Albers, uh, Natalia, and uh, Ionica. And I think particularly uh, given the time, I'll, I'll go a little bit through the general tips, but I'll also highlight things that were particularly helpful for me. So as a bit of uh, context, this is my Twitter CV. Uh, apparently I have a profile since 2010, just before starting my PhD, uh, but I actually only really started using it since around 2015 during my postdoc and immediately regretted not starting earlier. Uh, since then it has been a very positive thing for me, both uh, personally and uh, professionally. Uh, maybe also good to mention that maybe uh, different from uh, what many talks of science communication today were about. Uh, I talk mostly about being an academic rather than my specific field of research, although you will see various computer science jokes. Um, it's not, I think, I think my audience are, are other early career academics mostly. Uh, so it's been helpful for me from, um, you know, getting help with uh, any question on like choosing a uh, Windows or a Mac, uh, uh, getting invited to all sorts of talks and uh, just connecting with people, uh, both for collaborations, but also people I am um, happy to call friends now. Uh, maybe to highlight some examples of collaborations, of course, one example is the paper that we are talking about right now. Um, although we as authors are all coincidentally from the Netherlands and we have related backgrounds, we are in quite different fields and we wouldn't typically collaborate together uh, on research topics. Uh, another example is... Um, this recent preprint with uh, Gael. So uh, me and Gael only know each other through Twitter. And I think last summer um, he was commenting to somebody else about uh, one specific problem about machine learning. And I sort of commented on that thread saying, okay, I'd love to write a paper about that. And I think he messaged me, me back like, what do you mean exactly? And what, what do you think about that? Well, and nine months later and a whole lot of direct messages later, we now have this uh, preprint, which you know, people are people seem to enjoy. So do, do check it out if this is sort of related to your area of research. Uh, I think it's my pinned tweet at the moment. You can find it through there. Uh, but my point today is not to convince you why Twitter is a good idea or explain general Twitter mechanics. Um, so. As I said, I want to go a bit through these rules we have in the paper and highlight um, some tips that were important for me. The first rule is uh, start somewhere but show up. And to me, I think this is the most important rule uh, that basically you need to do a little bit often. Uh, it's a bit like doing exercise. Uh, you don't really need a lot to start, but you need to just do it regularly. Uh, whereas if you get like all this nice equipment and you have this whole plan lined up, but you, but you never actually go, you will not see results. 
so if you're just starting, some things you can do to be active is, uh, well, the easiest is to follow other people and like their tweets, but then people don't really, doesn't really tell people who you are. Uh, you can also uh, retweet other information that you think is interesting, might be interesting to other people. Uh, or you can, uh, you know, if somebody is asking a question, you can offer your answer, or if somebody shared something interesting, you can ask for follow-up information. And this is kind of a more easy way to engage with tweets rather than having to tweet anything yourself. So now you're tw tweeting on a regular basis maybe, or well, you're using Twitter, uh, you can discover some more opportunities. Uh, I think it's very logical to follow uh, people and labs and institutions, but uh, maybe you also want to take a look at some group accounts um, for example, uh, real, real scientists. So every week, a different scientist curates the account, and then you get everything from uh, astrophysics to jellyfish. So that's how you can meet people from different uh, disciplines. And of course, well, Pint of Science is, uh, which we just heard, is another uh, good example where you can where you can come across people from, uh, you know, not your own field. And you can also look at uh, hashtags, which are more general to research or academia. So I think I've used academic Twitter and PhD chat a lot to, to just find people, uh, find people I connect with. And of course, once you have a few such accounts, you can also look at who they follow and what hashtags they use to, you know, find more of the same, uh, but slightly different people who you um, get along with. Now you're on Twitter, uh, you know, more and finding interesting things. Uh, maybe it's time to uh, post a bit more of your own content. I think the easiest, uh, like, original tweet to compose is maybe if you are going to a conference or you have a paper or you read an interesting paper if you feel that tweeting about your own paper is weird. Uh, you can, of course, also ask a question. Uh, asking something about Windows versus Linux is guaranteed to get you a lot of responses, so that's always a, always a good one. Um, you can also ask for, for, you know, examples if you're writing some, some grant. So I remember, <laughs> I, I remember once I, I was um, writing a particular grant for the first time and I haven't seen many, many examples of that, so then I, I asked on Twitter and the next day I had uh, 20 examples in my inbox, some of them from <laughs> some of them from complete st strangers. Uh, Matlab versus Python is also a good one, as uh, Stefan says. But to me, and what was the most difficult is just sharing something uh, completely just from myself about my day or what I'm what I'm thinking. Uh, for this, I recommend having cats because they're always willing participants. Uh, to feature in your tweets. Of course, there's some uh, etiquette you might want to follow. Uh, there are, of course, uh, basic rules um, that still apply, but a few also Twitter specific things that were not clear to me in the beginning. Uh, so a few to mention here. Uh, when you find out something about something really, really cool from, from somebody else, it's polite to mention them. And then you can use this HT, which is uh, heard through or hat tip. So you're just sort of citing their tweet and giving them credit for finding that really cool thing. Uh, sometimes you might also want to carbon copy people when you find something cool and be like, well, check out this uh, cool paper, uh, CC, uh, you know, Remy, uh, Remy Gao and fMRI guy. Uh, but with that, I think, so you, you point their attention to it, but I think you also have to be mindful of it if you're not sure this is something people will appreciate because they will get more notifications because of this. Uh, so it's something you have to be mindful of with like tweet tagging accounts you're not really too familiar with. And uh, well, okay, it says don't subtweet. Maybe some subtweeting is uh, important sometimes, but in general, if you're discussing somebody in a negative way, um, if you don't mention who you're talking about, it's a bit weird. It's a bit like gossiping, but in public. Uh, so that's 
can be frowned upon. Uh, that brings me to my next point is that it can all get uh, too much. Uh, don't forget that you don't have to read everything and you should use Twitter in a way that's good for you. Uh, I personally disable lots of my notifications. So if you don't see me replying to something, uh, that's because my brain just cannot handle it. Uh, I also use a lot of lists. So for example, for accounts that I only want to check uh, once in a while, but do not every day tweet something I want to follow. Uh, I have them on lists related to certain topics, and then I might check it more in the weekend and during the during the week, for example. And you can also uh, mute certain certain words or people if you are uh, currently receiving too much of a particular topic. Uh, often it ha happens when when I think in the in the U.S. when there are some sport matches. Uh, some people who I think have great science content start to commenting every move of the sports players and yeah, then they, they have a temporary, uh, temporary mute from me. Things are going well. Uh, now you want to maybe grow your uh, network uh, on people. So I think it's good here to think about who you want to reach and what kind of things you want to tweet about and that it's a little bit aligned together. Um, I think you don't need to have a, very, a single, very clear goal, which I've always struggled with to define, but it's good to have some kind of multiple clusters of things uh, and have an overlap between the, the two. Um, so if you're only, for example, retweeting uh, recent papers and discussing the mathematical proofs with them, but your goal is to connect with the general public, maybe that's not the, the best match, uh, but it's not that you need to do uh, one thing and one thing only. So once you have an idea of what these directions are, you can find more people who have similar goals and uh, you know uh, follow them and engage with their tweets. Advantages of Twitter do not stop online. Um, of course, what the, this rule was originally about is that, for example, if you're going to a conference, you can use Twitter to arrange to meet with people beforehand and then actually see them at the conference and then stay in touch after. Although we're, I mean, I hope we have in-person events again soon, uh, but I think this still also applies to virtual conferences. Uh, if you're, if you are, if you think it's, it's a bit weird to show up by yourself in a virtual uh, Friday drinks uh, Zoom room. It's very nice to have some people there that you recognize from Twitter. And also, I mean, some people you will meet on Twitter, you can also, they, you might want to do things with them off Twitter as well. So for example, I have a weekly Dungeons and Dragons role-playing group uh, with lots of people I've only met over the internet. By this point, uh, things are going great. Uh, and you would like maybe to get more followers so your your message or whatever it is you like sharing uh, reaches uh, more people. And I think uh, here it's important to think about when somebody sees your account, when they click follow, uh, it's they decide whether you will add something to their timeline. So some things. I look at is uh, is that the biography of the person mentioned something be beyond their job description. Uh, and if their recent tweets are things I'm interested in, but also different enough from the people I already follow, because otherwise I'll see those tweets anyway. But of course, for uh, yeah, these things will be different for for everybody. This is just my my qualities that are important. Um, also, you can learn from examples either by analyzing your own tweets on Twitter analytics and what the algorithm prioritizes. Uh, definitely uh, adding uh, pictures with alternative text and uh, hashtags to your, to your tweet will help here. Or also by uh, studying other accounts with more followers. Um, 
I got a question about DMs, which I think is very important, but I'll try to say it in the end because I think I will actually have time for questions, uh, contrary to most talks. Um, related to reaching a wider audience, I think it's important to show that you are a real person and not just an algorithm that shares content that is going to get clicks, uh, which I uh, see often, especially with people who are trying to sell something. And I don't mean that you should uh, share your personal life events on Twitter the way you would on some other social media, uh, but you can show some realness of things like, uh, you know, GitHub problems and your favorite coffee cup, um, maybe your bread baking hobby you started in the pandemic. Uh, so this is the way that you really get to to know people, and I think this is something uh, that really uh, worked out well for me. And cats, always cats. Dogs, okay, also. So finally, uh, once you do have more followers, of course, you should be aware that your tweets will get noticed more, which can have both positive and negative uh, consequences. Uh, I think the best thing to try to do is to, to use your reach to promote things you want to see more of and that can be both uh, you know an open science initiative or just a, like a, a picture that makes everybody smile uh, and also yeah you can you can use it to help uh, other people who are starting out so maybe by writing a paper or accepting to give a talk that's what I wanted to, to share with you today thanks for your attention Thanks, Veronica. That was great. A nice, clear summary. Perhaps you can uh, go into that question about DMs. Yes. So the question is, do you use the direct message function of Twitter a lot? When is it okay to approach people personally? I find this very hard to estimate. Um, I'm not sure I use it a lot. I think it's more often that people DM me than I DM others. Uh, I do feel that when it happens, either way is that there's always some kind of public conversation where you can already see, okay, we're kind of talking about the same thing. Uh, so maybe it's a, it's a topic like uh, bullying and open science, and you can see a bit the responses and you're like, well, this person seems to have had a very similar experience than me. And then, and then you can always, if you want to err on the safe side, you can also reply in the thread in the thread. So you post a public reply like uh, so and so, is it okay if I DM you? And then well if not if not, but usually I think people people respond positively. Cool. So I hope that answers the, the question. No, that's also a good idea. It's good DMs. I want to appreciate their work. I would say actually it's better to post it publicly to appreciate somebody's work. Because I don't see there really being any disadvantage to that. And that also feels nice and also sh shares it with more people. <laughs>